Hey everybody and welcome on back to Building with Whip. Today we are back here in the single player survival world and I am so very excited to be back here. I am so ready to get back to building. Last episode we came through here and worked on planning out the new front area for our city which hopefully is going to turn out to be really really cool. Along with that we also built up a new stables building. Something where we can house a lot of the horses that are coming in through the front gates because the people don't want to take them into their homes throughout the city so we probably need a stables area to hold quite a few of them so that was super fun coming throughout here designing this structure and building it up together a lot of you really seem to enjoy this one and a lot of you gave me some amazing feedback that we are going to be taking into account here very shortly on how we can improve this one this horse here out however was able to get off of the lead so let's go ahead and throw this one inside if can we Oh, maybe there's an invisible lead stuck to this one. All right, well, we'll fix that later. But anyways, one thing that I wanted to talk about real quick that a lot of people were able to give me some amazing feedback in the comments is this big old gatehouse right here in front of me. This one, I think we are going to actually be replacing. A lot of y'all said that it fits too closely into the walls. It doesn't stand out too much. And it probably is a little too small as I was thinking because right now it's five blocks wide for the gate itself. And then the cart that we have positioned outside the gate is four blocks. No, this is six blocks wide out here. So that wouldn't even be able to fit through the gate. And it definitely, the gate is a little too short to be a big old city gate. We don't have a portcullis room or anything like that above it. So I would like to rework this one. And I think it'd be really, really cool to be able to do that. Alongside that one, one thing that we're going to be adding here into the very near future is this building structure right here in front of us planned out with the stone. I'm almost thinking that we could turn that into some sort of like a gatehouse structure attached to this being a guardhouse of sorts of something going on there. So we can have that connected into the city walls as well. So we can have somewhere for the guards to be able to position and stay while they're kind of defending the city. And that would actually give us a way for people to get on top of the wall. Because as great as this wall is right now, there's no way on top of it. In order to properly make a stables interior that we're going to be doing here in a few, we needed a lot of saddles to be able to show, you know, there's some place for all the horse tackle or whatever we want to call it. I can never remember the correct name for how we're going to get that. So I came out to the nether to attack a brand new nether fortress that I had not been to before because I felt like that was a smart idea on how we can get a bunch of saddles easily and so far we've gotten three and an iron horse armor so it's pretty good after a pretty successful nether raiding mission we were able to get a few more stuff another iron armor a diamond as well and a bunch of soul sand which you all said would look a heck of a lot better in our manure pile here than the podzel so we're gonna add a few bits of this in i like having the podzel in here because it's kind of different color than everything else we have going on so I think it would work out pretty well having all of it, like all of these mixed in here together. It is a bunch of uh, horse poop anyway, so it does kind of make sense to have a lot of the stuff in here. Uh, maybe we throw that guy right back up there. But I think that's pretty good for getting our manure pile fixed up. Starting with, off with some of the simple details that we can add into these areas is inside of our horse stalls, we have to have some way for the horses to eat. And I was thinking we could do something up in this area, something that's just a little high up off of the ground. So the horses kind of have to reach up for it because we think about it, the horse head right there, he probably, they could probably reach up there and munch on the sides of that. And I don't want to bring it down to the this block level here, having the hay blocks one block down because then they would kind of probably die by standing in there. So we're going to leave them there for now and we can bring those in for all three of those. I'm using the acacia trap doors in here since that allows them to kind of bite through them. There's the holes in them versus if we use like the spruce, for example it'd be a bit harder for them to see through there and get any of the food out of it. Another thing that we probably want to throw into these stalls is a small area for them to get some water. So we can make a really, really tiny one just by doing this and drop a water bucket in there. And it'll only fill up a tiny portion of this area. And then they still can't jump over the fence. So we don't have to worry about the horses getting out. But, you know, maybe invisible leads will keep them stuck somewhere. All of our stalls are now prepped with some water, some food, so our horses can actually exist in here pretty well. And we have a small, like a larger water area out here if they need to refill those ones. Figure this would be somehow we could have this, somebody could bring it up from, I don't know, the city fountain down there, which a lot of y'all actually said we should replace this fountain. Do y'all think we should keep this fountain? Or a lot of people said move it into like a tree or something like that. I don't, let, let me know. I kind of like a fountain being in our grand entrance once we rework these things over here, they'll be a lot bigger and a lot cooler. I promise it's going to be pretty, pretty sweet. I got a cool idea in mind for how we're going to do that. But let me know what y'all are thinking on that one. Now, however, what I want to focus on is inside of here, we do have a few more horse stalls that need to be built out. 
These ones are kind of smaller ones though. So I wanna go with a slightly different design for how we're gonna construct those. And since they're fully inside, I think it'll make more sense. But what I want to do here is I want to build up like a horseshoe working area. So a small forage area right over in this bit. So if we need to repair some horseshoes and like melt them down and rework them, we can do that. And then we also have like an anvil right here where we can do some stuff to bang it into shape. And I thought I had a grindstone on me, but we could use like a grindstone to smooth them all out and all that stuff. Coming back on down here into the stables, I've been doing quite a bit of work inside. Now I want to preface this with saying, I don't know much about horses, stables and things like that, but I did grow up with a barn at my house and a few horses out there. So I'm trying to go off of memory from what we had there. Inside of this one, we used to stable one of our horses who was named Mosby at a stables nearby, sometimes depending on just like time of year and what was going on and what other horses we had back at our house. But we, I remember them having basically these huge stall doors. They're kind of blocked down below so the horses couldn't really see directly out in case they got spooked by people walking by or other horses that were going by as well. But up above, they had an area where they could kind of see a little bit further so they didn't feel like they were, you know, in a box. They had some ability to see out, like this horse here has ability to see that way. Can kind of see a little glimpse of outside right in there. They can see over this way, maybe see the other horses who are reaching up, kind of say hi to their neighbor over the fence. And then this one here also has the luxury of having the window. So that was my thought process behind all of these. The inside of the stables are, or inside of the stalls, all have their food areas and they have the water buckets here as well. We'll get into the placement for where those guys are at, the hay buckets up there at the top here shortly. Over on this side, I decided to bring in a few more things as we talked about previously. The forge is in here with a little magma block. We got some paintings. One interesting thing about these paintings though, it apparently right now in the snapshots for 1.15, you cannot have transparent pixels inside of a painting. So we could be in huge trouble with these paintings throughout the rest of our world. So please everybody reach out to Mo Yang, tweet at him, do them all, ask him if that's a real thing. Cause if it is, we gotta start finding a workaround for how we do these. That being said over here, we have a little bit of clippers things that I believe something similar to this is what we had growing up. The shears I think are the best option for how you could pull the horseshoes off of a horse's foot, off of their hoof. Then up here, we just have a little bit more additional storage. This is kind of copied all the way down. We have a small tackle room in here where we could maybe store a few things like say, I don't know, one of our saddles. We can put a saddle in here. Let's turn that around for us. And then maybe we can put like the iron armor. So like the more rich stuff that we don't want everybody else to be taking away, we can put the iron armor in here as well. And then I was thinking over on this wall, we have four more saddles. So I was thinking we could do a saddle here, get two of them down in these this spot, and then we can do two more saddles up over here. And we don't really have a great way of making these look like they're resting on anything. So we're just gonna throw a few spruce trap doors in here to make it feel like there's a small bit of shelving going on, which I know probably isn't the most accurate thing that we could do. And then we have another hay bale just smashed there in the corner because why not? Now coming up to this upper area where we we're talking about previously, I said we we're gonna come up here and check on something is these ones right back in here. This is something that I remember from when I was a kid and we had the horses and everything around us is that there are ways to get to the horse's food from up above. So we didn't have to take the hay all the way down the ladder and then do all that stuff. There was ability from up here above where we're standing right now, where you could basically just open up a little latch, which we were gonna signify here with some oak trap doors, and you could drop some hay down in there so they could get their food. And I think that's something, a little detail like that, where we can add a lot of realism into this build here. I know probably some horse people down in the comments are gonna yell at me and be like, that's not how it works at all. But guys, this is all I remember. So we're going off of memory here and it's totally fine. So we're gonna just do that in here. So we have a bunch of those things. Now I'm gonna just spend a little bit of time here decorating the hayloft out. You can tell it's a hayloft because the way it is, it's pretty good. We planted a bunch of hay up here and it looks good. That's kind of what the hayloft is for. So I like it, it's gonna do the job. One thing I wanted to note that a lot of y'all have been yelling me at about in the comments below. This world is not 100% realistic please please everybody remember that one this is minecraft we only have blocks stairs and slabs and a few other odd shapes to be working with there is no way we can make something 100 percent factually realistic in minecraft so i'm not even trying to i'm building a city inside of a world with the lore that i'm developing around it not everything here needs to be reaching the standards and realism standards of what would have actually been in the time period that we might maybe potentially be building in 
And that's just something I want y'all to keep in mind. I don't want to say anything about that further. We still have the other house to be tackling inside there where it, some people had mentioned that we could do some like small hostile hostel type housing in the second floor, which I thought was pretty cool. But one thing we got to deal with first is we need to go breed up some horses to get them over here. So I figured we'd breed up the horses, let them grow up while they're kind of sitting out there doing their thing. And to do that, we're going to need quite a few gold nuggets so we can make some golden carrots. Thankfully, we have a horse farm really, really close to us right out here where we can grab some of them. But before we jump over there, we're going to quickly run here underneath our mountain range where I built a carrot and potato farm that hopefully has producing things, been producing things, because it's sat here for a very, very long time being completely untouched. So can we hope? We got some. That's 64 is more than enough carrots than what I need. <laughs> We should be good with that. Well, I definitely didn't bring enough gold with us. So we got 22 golden carrots, but we should be able to use these to put the horses in breeding mode. So we give one to you, buddy. You're good to go. And you and now you guys love each other so very much because you've had golden carrots and we got a baby. Look at that. I need to spend some time breeding these up because we do not have nearly as many as we need. I bred up the horses a little bit. And unfortunately, we only have brown horses in there because I remember creating that stable as an area where they breed up just brown horses because I thought that'd be a cool idea at the time and now i'm remembering how difficult it is to get other types of horses so i'm running around the world trying to gather up a few more so we can place them all in their stalls and the city looks so cool from this angle with the trees in there below oh my gosh i am so ready to keep working on this area it's very very cool right now so on that whole new gatehouse thing i think we gotta make that happen so i definitely got these llamas through a very safe means we did not remove any traders from the world i swear we didn't do anything like that but i figured we'd have a stall full of llamas in there as well our horses and llamas are all in place now i've decided to leave two of the stalls in here open so if we ever need to bring a horse in ourselves or something like that where we need to store them we have some space for that or if some new mob or something comes down the road maybe we try and get a hoglin in here i feel like that could be pretty fun so we can ride around on the piggy but I will tell you all what, we still have the interior left to build in this entire place, including the floors themselves, but I'm not too happy with the structure of this one right now. So I think we're going to hold off on this one for today. I kind of want to rework it and add an extra floor to it, but that would really intercept the sight lines that we have from our guard towers on both sides of it. So I don't know too much about how I want to do that one. I will tell you what though, I do want to come up to the mountains here for the next little bit and plan out a small section because we did a live stream last week where we built up a large portion of this and filled in a lot of the dirt of areas where I had previously planned out things that we talked about in the last episode, like we filled in all of the dirt here, meaning this section right here where we're gonna be doing the Nordic village is basically ready to go. We could start the village as is right now and be totally fine, which means we have another new project coming forward. If y'all are excited about that one, be sure to let me know but we need to figure out what the mountain range going from here to over there is looking like before we build the village. I want to make sure the mountains are totally completed going from here all the way over while we're looking at what we're doing as far as planning the village out and everything in there. So I'd like to spend about a half hour or so here just getting this stuff ready to go. There's a large amount of shulker boxes down this way that we just flew over that have dirt and gravel and grass and stone and actually no gravel but I'm gonna get some work on here planning this area out. A good amount of time later, this area is now pretty much planned out for what I want it to look like, which I think is pretty cool. I'm, I'm excited for this one. It should turn out really, really sweet. It took a long time to get all this stuff ready to go. <laughs> I went through more than a stack of rockets and I stood on top of this little part right here. We'll kind of plotting out being like, hmm, if we brought this out a little bit further. What I really like about this one though, is you'll see these areas is the stone isn't very flat where I feel like in this area in particular, it's kind of flat along that. So I tried really adding a lot of variation and depth, like what we did in the first part over here, where like this giant part where all that terracotta is, is really just protruding itself out of the mountain. So I tried mimicking the original style we went for with this one. I think it's going to turn out pretty cool, but let's kick this off into good old fashioned time lapse mode and build it up. Working on the mountains today, I wanted to start finishing out what we're going to be doing moving over from the left side where we have the big mountain towards the right where we're kind of have that planning area that we're just working on. I want to get as much of that done as we possibly could today. It's taking a lot longer because on streams, I'm kind of chatting with everybody, just hanging and just having a good time there. I'm not really focused on 
accomplishing a huge amount of work. So this was a three hour stream and we got a good chunk of it done, but we weren't able to get too much done. So that kind of puts it all into perspective about how long all of this takes. And it's been really fun though. A lot of people have been really enjoying seeing the mountain building and seeing especially like the tree building, which we did some here at the end as well, which we'll be showing you at the end of this time lapse thing. But it, it's been fun. It's been really cool coming up here to work on all these things. I've been trying to change up the mountain style away from having these big, long, straight lines of stone. They're just bringing us super, super high up into the sky to adding more scale to it and adding more of these dirt areas, which eventually are going to be turned into snow. That's just stuff that we're all working towards in the near future where we're going to start changing those things out. But that leads me to when, as soon as we get these mountains more finished out towards where the valley is going to be starting, how, or not the valley, but the mountain pass of how we can get through this entire area, that means we can start the Nordic Village, which you can see right here, which I am so excited for. That's exactly what I want to be doing right now. I think I need a break from the city, which I love, but we're going to be doing a little bit more work here in the city today. But if y'all want to be seeing the Nordic Village here soon or other smaller ideas, please let me know. I think we need a small break from this guy here. Welcome on back over to the city after we worked on the mountains up there and I want to get ourselves started with building up this house here to kind of finish off today's episode. I thought it'd be kind of fun just to get another house build inside of our world done. This one's almost going to be like a guild hall, a guild house of sorts. I'm not too sure on what it's really going to be on the inside yet. So if any of y'all have any ideas on what we can include in this one, because it's going to be rather grand. I think it'd probably be best if I get some work done on it and show y'all. I have an idea in mind that I'm having a hard time coming up with a way to describe it. As I've been building up the structure, it's been like screaming guild hall to me of sorts. I'm not really sure what we want to do as far as the guild that lives in here or even if we're going to do one. But right now, it's just giving me that huge vibe to it. I want to mess up the stone here. This is just the base layer. And I think I want to add like a viney leafy thing going a long ways up this just to break up that gray on gray on gray on gray. And especially what we have over here as well. This one has a bit more depth to it, but those outer walls are just flat at this point. So I'm working through it. I think I think it's going to be good. This area where we have the red right in here, I'm just going to be bringing in stone along this entire way and bring that all the way out of the top. But it should be good. I've got everything in place for the general shape of it. I have not done the roof yet, but I'm almost thinking about doing acacia wood for that to give it a red highlight. And then I had the idea of coming through here and at this level, just kind of creating a dividing line and then filling this upper half area in with brick. I don't, I'm thinking it might kind of look cool, but we're going to, we're going to see here together. I don't really know on this one. This is kind of just me messing around with some ideas in my brain and seeing if they'll pay off, but we'll see on this. I think it almost might be a little bit too much red on the top if we do this and the acacia wood as well. But if we do that like all the way across here and maybe we have like a dividing line with some stairs, kind of like how we have that down below. You know what? Maybe I'm gonna try reversing it. Maybe we do the brick on the bottom and the stone on the top. I made the change and moved the brick to the bottom and I love it. This is a million times better. One thing I do wanna change though is all of these windows. On the sides, I had them in my inventory already because I was thinking I was going to be doing this, but I think yellow might work a little bit better here. Instead of having the blue, I think the yellow is going to work a lot better with our brick here. And I like this polished andesite that we have in the middle here too, giving that kind of that gray highlight in the center of these. But let me get these windows swapped out and I'm hoping this will be a lot better. Yellow is in place on this side now and I, I like this. I like this a lot more. I think that's going to add a lot more character to the building. And there we have it, my friends, the mostly completed one. I'm realizing right now that I forgot to put a stair from there to right there. But I was trying to figure out how we could divide these things, because when we originally moved the brick to the base, that transition just felt weird. Upside down stairs like we had used as a transition for the roof up there really helped that out. And I really like the end result of what we have right now. So that's been pretty sweet. I've also come back here and added in the podzol and course dirt kind of coming back down around this way which gets us into our secret entrance back here into the sewers, which is just fantastic that that is now more on the hidden side. So I'm really, really happy with that one. Sorry about the weird cut there. My car is actually in the shop right now getting some work done on it and the mechanic called me. So figured I should probably take that call. But afterwards, I did come back in here and added in some extra detail for what I wanted to do in this area. For now, it was just a dirt path and I decided to come back in here and add in some grass. And I've been looking at pictures recently on Reddit and other like Pinterest and things like that, where people have been using just campfires to symbolize sticks on the ground. 
and I love that. So we brought some campfires back in here and used the water bucket on them to unlight them. But yeah, so we got a few of those around here. We got some note block crates here as well. And then this tree is spruce leaves and just some dark oak leaves or spruce fences and dark oak leaves. And I felt like it fit in here really well. And you can almost barely see it from up above here too, which I like. So it helps disrupt that just straight transition into there. And it kind of still hides everything back in this. So you can still see what's going on here if you were to look over the edge, but it doesn't really show too much. But that is all I have time for in today's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed building up this house here with me, as well as doing a lot of the interiors of our stable, working on the mountains and all of that stuff. Be sure to let me know what y'all want to be seeing moving forwards. I think I want to tackle the gatehouse, but I'm also really, really, really wanting to build up some boats. I think boats would be a great break from the city itself, still working on the city, but something else. Anyways, let me know down in the comments below what y'all want to be seeing. Please be sure to hit that like button if you did enjoy and subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you on the flip side.